better do something about that cough, Christina. Don't worry. I'm not crazy. At least, I don't think so. Hello. Welcome to Last Frame. I am Christina Marquez, and today we have a very special guest with us. I do believe he would like to introduce himself. Hello, I'm Guy Sehe. I play James Sunderland in Silent Hill 2. Yes, welcome Guy. And with us are also my two amazing co-hosts. Hello, uh, this is Dave Hillborn and I'm uh, also two back from Hell Descent Forums. And this is Roger. And I used to be in a Hell Descent Forum, but then I quit. <laughs> 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 All right. So, um, as most of you know, um, Silent Hill recently, well, the Silent Hill franchise recently turned 15 years. I do believe it was end of January, February, something like that. Yeah, first of February. Um, and we thought, you know, what better way to commemorate the series than to um, highlight arguably one of the most um, significant and pivotal games in the series, which is Silent Hill 2. And so we figured this would be a fantastic opportunity to interview Mr. Sihi, which is the voice behind James Sunderland, you know. Um, and we have some questions for you guys, both from ourselves and the community. So if you would be ready, we can get started right away with the first question. Sure, go right ahead. Okay, so first we want to know a little bit more about the guy, <laughs> pun not intended, behind James Sunderland. Um, now, in the past, we know you've mentioned doing various types of theater, and we were just curious, uh, what do you think may have inspired you to pursue acting? Well, hmm. When I was young, my, <clears throat> my mother played guitar, and my father played piano, and my mother taught my brother and I to sing, and that was where our performing talents began. I, my brother sings uh, to this day in a band. And oh. I um, sang in choir at uh, school and also at church. And then I performed in musical productions at my elementary school and high school. Um, then in the uh, 70s and 80s, when I was uh, still quite young, my my father was making some documentary films and uh, also some docu drama type films that were uh, distributed through schools around the United States, and and I uh, I starred in two of my dad's films, and then I also worked as a cameraman for some of his films. Wow. So then after, uh, yeah, it was, it, it was really quite a lot of experiences. I learned about editing back in those days when we would he'd be working on the, uh, completing his documentaries. And then uh, it, was, it was really quite interesting. My brother, my older brother went into film production uh, and I was supposed to, uh, in fact, I was enrolled at film school after high school, but uh, my uh, mother suddenly got this huge inspiration that I should change my in, my major to industrial design. And uh, I really wasn't interested in many things at that time in my life when I was 17. Um, you know, motorcycles, sex and drugs and rock and roll. That's about all I could get my <laughs> head around, right? So I was like, okay, mom, whatever. And so she wrote to the co yeah she wrote to the college and changed my major. And I sometimes wonder how my life would have turned out had I gone to film school. Anyway, thanks. Thankfully, I uh, I really took to industrial design. I liked it. And in my <clears throat> in my third year of the design program, I was required to take these communications classes. Anybody who's gone to college knows about these classes. They're dreadfully boring and really quite, quite inane. And I asked the dean uh, of my program, what was the purpose of this communications class requirement? And the dean said, 
Well, being a successful designer requires the ability to communicate in front of groups. And so we, we require the communications class. And I said, well, Dean, if, if you want to help the students prepare to speak in front of a group, they really should take acting classes. And he said, well, I'll tell you what, see, he, you take the acting class as a no credit elective. And if you still think it's a good idea afterwards, I'll consider it for future years. So I'm like, oh, well. Well, I took the, took him up on it. I did it anyway. And I took the acting classes and wow, they were fantastic. Wow. I, I, you know, I had been acting without mm. ever training or learning about it. It's like I had been drawing for years before I went to school and started learning how to render and do the, the sketching and the three-dimensional work that's necessary to be a designer. And then suddenly I'm able to act with someone coaching me and uh, giving me advice and teaching about the different approaches to acting and creating backstories. And it was fascinating. I loved it. And, uh, you know, how to stand, where to look when you're speaking to an audience, how to move your body when you're speaking in front of people. These are things I remember to this day and make me uh, a much better public speaker. So I remembered nothing from the communications classes I was required to take. So I think my, my real interest in acting started with those classes. Um, I mean, I did it before that, but I didn't understand it as a, as a skill you can develop in that way by making an effort and consciously thinking through things. I mean, there, there are some people who are so naturally talented, I guess they don't, they don't really need to worry about that. They're just being on the, on the stage and just being it. And now, well, I mean, I've, I've gone on quite a bit about that. I will tell you one last thing though. My son has just gone out in the world and he's an actor and singer as well yeah he seems to be in the family Currently sort of runs in the family with you guys yeah should yeah. he performing performing. in romeo and juliet at the moment guy he did yeah. well he just wrapped that but uh -huh. he's he's now he's auditioning for pilots uh for uh, for tv shows in new oh, york wow. and he uh Amazing. yeah but he played with uh elizabeth olsen he played romeo and she played juliet yeah. at the classic stage company in manhattan yeah and it was great. I went to see the show and, you know, I've, he went and did a master's degree in acting at NYU Tisch, which is one of arguably one of the best acting schools in the world. And three years there. And I and I asked him about the experience because I only took two semesters of acting and he he's done three years. Right. So, I was, well, mm -hmm. what have you what do they teach you? What are you learning at that level? Uh, at that elevated level, right? I mean, and uh, he said, basically, you're learning not to act. Yeah. You're learning just to mm. be. You've yeah. got to, exactly. right? You've got to be the part, not act it. Yeah. And you, mm. to do that, you've got to get way past the lines and way past the thinking about the character. You just got to be. So really, you're learning how to be yourself in that part on the stage or in front of the camera. So that was really interesting to learn that from him. And I'm, I'm still learning about acting. I learned mm. even today, I, what I posted a, a link to some video that a fan made uh, by re-editing some material I had done several years back. Yep. And people are commenting on it and I'm learning from their comments even now about what, how, how that worked out. And it's interesting. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I really like it. I, I mean, I wish I could do more of it. It would be fun. <laughs> was that the um, mm. was that was that the thing that I posted on yesterday, guy? That I said had a very po vibe. That's right. To it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Which it I does mean, I have. Recorded, I recorded that <clears throat> like three years ago, I think. Yeah, I remember uh, it when you first put it up. And I, it, when I, a, a fan sent it to me, and it was. Uh, it was kind of hauntingly interesting. And his first language is not English, so it has a very romanticized version of English uh, yeah, in the yeah. translation, right? And um, and I recorded it and I put some and I and I thought, well, I think that was actually the first thing I ever recorded uh, since the, uh, fans started contacting me. And it was the first dramatic reading I'd done in, in years. So it's... I just I wanted to put some images to it. So I was just, oh, OK, you know, I'll, I'll go fart around with uh, movie maker and i edited that video and threw it up there and it's kind of sat there all this time now he this the the i think his name is uh curtis ryan he 
he found it and he re-edited it to Silent Hill 2 images. And I don't know if you've seen it yet, but it, it really struck me very deeply with how, oh my goodness, this thing was written for Silent Hill 2. Oh, what a dummy I am, right? I mean, of course, <laughs> a fan sends me this thing. <laughs> and I, I suppose he thought I would get it, but I didn't get it at first. And now I asked uh, Curtis if, if he knew that from the first time he heard it, did he figure that out the first time? And he said, no, it was only when I started editing it that I saw how the images were just going together with it. And then I, wow. so I don't know, maybe it was, I'm trying to figure that out. I'm trying That's to track a down. Like, for serendipity there, isn't it? Um, yeah, really. Um, I'm trying to, someone else said it, that he thought the words might fit well with another, another game. That's very so important. I, it may be the universal key, right? This, 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 this story about being trapped in hell. Yep. Yeah. Um, how about we move on a little bit? Uh, now, this next question sort of ties into what you've been talking about now, you know, because it addresses um, certain past projects and things you've done in the past. But maybe, you know, let's, Roger, do you want to go ahead and ask the question yeah. anyway? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, um, we heard that you worked on some projects before. And um, but what other significant projects have you worked on? Are you working on anything in present? Well, I am, but I have a game soft. I like to think of it as a game software business now. It started mm -hmm. out as an education software company, but I see that the future is in let's they're called serious games this is a way of com commuting knowledge in a very painless and fast way so i have um, certain expertise i even my company has some patents on the process of refining knowledge so that it can be quickly assimilated uh the states back you know i've got a long history in this education area and i have been keenly aware of mankind losing out in the race to manipulate knowledge and I don't like that so I know where humans have special talents that cannot be at least at this point in time cannot be duplicated or bested by machines and I um, I like working in that area. I like keeping. You ever see that movie Terminator? Yeah. I'm kind mm. of. I'm the anti Terminator. Yeah. I'm one of the people fighting against the machines. I'm a. Uh, I wouldn't call myself a neo luddite, but I. I prefer. That may you, John Connor. Uh, no, I won't claim that. I'm. I say I'm, but I'd be one of the people on his team. Hurrah! <laughs> <laughs> so I'm working on serious games to help people acquire knowledge about things they, they need to know about or want to know about. Um, I don't actually think there's a better combination. If you can be entertained and also um, educate yourself at the same Draw time. Draw knowledge from it, yeah, it's an exactly. Incredibly, it's an incredibly noble pursuit, I think. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I, it's, um, it's, the trick is that... to not be thinking about learning while you're doing it. Then if you're, otherwise it becomes work. So you've got, now there are some very popular games out there like Candy Crush. Mm -hmm. which your brain is working, but there's nothing left over after you've played it. Nothing of, no no, no value retained. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So like fast food for the brain. Yeah, so if you can retain something useful after having played, that's what I want to do. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. And, I, and I think that is needed in... Uh, in the gaming industry nowadays, you know, with how gaming is more focused on just pure entertainment and violence, you know, and blood. Um, there needs to be something else, some deeper value to it. So, well, you know, yeah, that would be Fantastic. nice. Let, if they have, but that's that's over there, right? Those, those, those are people making real, real games like mm. Silent Hill 2 and yeah. Team Silent People. And I, I'm not in that genre. I'm not in that uh, mm -hmm. that level. Those guys are way beyond what I do. I, I'm talking about taking the kind of really boring education software that's being rammed down students' throats or and their eyes and, and trying to make something that's <laughs> bright, that's 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 fun to use yeah. and the and the academic community respects. So it comes from a basis in the academic community that's yeah. that's 
defensible, but and that, and yet at the same time the students like it. And then if I get my way, it's going to be free. Mm -hmm. So is out of curiosity, is this the Lexica project or whatever it's called? That's right. Lexica. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Wow. Um, That's what I'm working on. I'm working on that, and I've got a. Uh, I don't know how much you guys know about what I do. I mean, sometimes fans, they don't know very much about me. So we're reasonably, we're reasonably confident, reasonably knowledgeable. Yeah. Okay, yeah. All right. Now I've got a uh, a college that I'm in the process of uh, uh, tr uh, transacting. I'm going to be selling it. So. Wow. I've been involved in it for about six, about seven years now in the, in 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 all, and uh, it's grown up quite a bit. I think it started with about when we when we acquired it, my group, uh, about just under four thousand students, and now it's just over twelve thousand students. So it's really expanded over those that period of time, and we've gone about as far as we can go with it. It's time to. To move on because of the scale that it's reached we need to put it in the hands of a bigger partner who can take full advantage of, of what it offers but yeah. i've been very proud of that as well because it deals in natural medicine wow. and uh training oh, nice yeah you know, training practitioners in in the for the future in uh, all forms of nutritional medicine and uh, naturopathy homeopathy acupuncture massage therapies and so forth all the things that uh that you know natural the the way medicine was before petrochemicals mm. were used yeah, to, yeah, to yeah, yeah. yeah so that that's another project i've been involved in that's been a big part of my life for the last seven years that and, is fantastic. and again that's an incredibly sort of um philanthropist um or maybe that's not the right expression I'm looking for, but it's incredible. Well, I hope, I hope not, Dave. I'm planning to make some money off of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, at least he's honest. <laughs> oh, you evil businessman. Yeah, I'm an evil. See, that's the difference. Right? <laughs> you can choose what kind of project there's the, you want. There's the about. ugly face of corporate. It really yeah. is ugly head. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> um, shall, we, um, shall we continue, guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you feel satisfied with the answer, guy, or is there anything you'd like to add on projects I've, I'm working on? Uh, hmm. I'm happy with that. I'm, I'm okay. I'm working on a game that has. Uh, well, no, never mind. I won't. I won't tip my hand on the game. So you can just wait for this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So, the next question, I guess, gets more back into Silent Hill Two territory. You know, sure. you. I guess it was inevitable. You know, we have to start talking about it eventually. But oh no, uh, no, please. That's what, um, it should be about. That's what the fans want to hear about. Bearing in mind that you had very little knowledge about the actual, you know, story and the ending of Silent Hill 2 and all that. Um, what kind of motivation did you receive from Team Silent to prepare you for each scene uh, or as the general role, you know, for James Sunderland? Hmm. That's a deep one. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's deep because it was 15 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I've, I've, I really want to be fresh about this, so I want to recall a memory of it, not just repeat what I've said before to other people. Mm -hmm. I have said in the past that they did not give me much uh, detail or um, they didn't elaborate on what the different endings would be. They certainly never disclosed anything about the UFO ending or the... the um, even the dog ending, which I recorded the lines for, they didn't describe it. The only endings that I was vaguely aware of were, you know, and I, even that I didn't, no, I didn't have any idea about the endings, even, even after we recorded it. For me, they could have recorded the scenes and put them in a different order for all I knew that how it was going to come out. So about my motivation to take each particular scene um it was minimal i think it goes back to the audition where they decided that i was like james and so mm. they just wanted me to keep doing more of that which was be that kind of 
human. They wanted maybe a normal guy. It sort was of very yeah. They exactly. Hell. They didn't want me yeah. to overplay it at all. They wanted they wanted me to. But, well, I mean, you 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 see the performance, and they, that's what they that's how they liked it. So when when I did it that way, I I think I, when I listened to it, it seems. Uh, I thought I was putting more out than people than than even I see in it. So I imagine other people see it as even more uh, cool or um, what's the right word I'm looking for? It's like hidden. There's there's not a lot showing there when I when I listen to it. So I think it might even appear more so to others. I'm when I look in the mirror at myself or when someone takes a picture of me. Um, I'm always surprised because I thought I was smiling when I did that, or I and when I see the photo, I I look at my face and I don't see a smile on there. It looks like I'm just neutral. So yeah. I think when I'm not smiling, yeah. my face is kind of taciturn, and when I'm smiling, it's neutral. And if I really do a big smile, then it looks like a, a then fair, maybe it looks like a smile, <laughs> a normal smile to other people. And I and I saw the other day somebody posted, uh, you know, I have bitch face. I was it's a genetic problem that when I'm not. Smiling really big, my face looks really bitchy. And I thought, I yeah, yeah, I got that. Yeah. So somebody posted that, and I said, "You're cursed with bitch face, or you know, bastard face." In my case, I've got this. So I think they like that for the part, and I, I had figured out he was living in a a nightmare, certainly a hellish world that he. You know, when you go through and you watch the game and all the stuff he sees, he never really gets bent out of shape about it, does he? I mean, he never really starts freaking out or no. losing it or, or getting extremely emotional. He just rolls from one thing to the other. The one, yeah. the one uh, and I've said this before, but the one bit of advice that stood out in my mind, it may have been Ito. I'm a little confused now between Sato and Ito. I keep thinking it was Sato, but it may well have been Ito who, who said to me, um, you know, your character doesn't really show a lot of emotion. It's the other characters that define you. He said if you've ever seen a Clint Eastwood movie, it's kind of like he doesn't he doesn't act a lot. The, there's it's all these people around him are defining what he does. I don't know if that's a true analogy or not, but it stuck with me. So I uh, kept that in my mind. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I've always seen James as like probably the most um, human and realistic video game character I've ever seen. Um, well, uh, Dave, <laughs> that's because there are so many similarities. I mean, I didn't kill my ex-wife, but I, I, <laughs> she certainly tried to kill me, so I know what the feeling was like. <laughs> yeah, it was a hard one. So, yeah, I... I Just tap and, into and it. People don't laugh at serious. <laughs> Yeah. Don't laugh. It's serious. <laughs> no, it's. See, it's, it's good to laugh at it because otherwise I'd be crying That's about it. it. And it was very yeah. tough back then. But I had just been out of that marriage for only, uh, gosh, only a couple of years. Really, it was hard. It took took me took me almost five years to go from separated to divorced because it had to be done so uh, gradually and carefully. So my my ex-wife is a what was at that time quite famous in Japan and she was you know difficult to say the least when she uh went into a certain kind of frame of mind and for me it was took some finesse to have her leave me standing or leave my company standing i think she on several occasions threatened to go on television and tell everybody that you know horrible things about me and that would have basically you know some actress in your country goes on television and starts ratting out her husband and saying terrible things about him you you might you might listen yeah. <laughs> to what she's yeah, saying yeah, yeah. 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 and that the scared thing, me because yeah. you know, yeah. i i think mean, about rumors or yeah, yeah. If you repeat that a lot people will stop believing it yeah, so that at that time, it, I had my children, my company, and my 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 wife, and uh, you know here I was, I was losing my wife, and I was having my my company threatened, and and I, and also having my children threatened because I, I might lose them through that process. So it was 
it was pretty low for me. And then I survived, yeah, I survived it, but I could say it took five years to get to the point where we had an amicable divorce because I just waited until she was ready to move on mentally. And then she finally got to that point and it was, it was easier to separate on that basis, but it was, those were hard years. So when the game came along, it's like, you know, man, you know, just what do you call it? Toughing it out, a difficult emotional situation and yeah. bottling it all up inside you. But having that pent up rage is, was all very easy for me. Very I'm not saying, you know, I don't know if they saw it or not. They just, they said, well, okay, react to the news that you're, your wife has died and I just sat down and started crying in front of them and, and you know doing because that was all so close it, 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 all that pain and sadness yeah, was so easy, close yeah. so just, there you go <laughs> that's an amazing wow it, it's honestly that is a very um it's a very touching moving, story you know with how um your life seems to have sort of coincided with what was what you would have to do for this role just not in the same way obviously but sort of on you know some maybe parallel ways and uh it must have yeah well there I mean, you go see i had that in me i don't usually yeah. I, i'm a basically a happy person a, a, a happy-go-lucky and to be a happy-go-lucky person requires a great talent it requires the talent to forget bad things mm -hmm. yeah and mm. move forward and be in the moment and, and yeah and don't don't hold a grudge yeah it's exactly the hardest part it's the yeah. hardest. so I'm able to do that, and, and so it was a little hard digging into that while we were recording to go back and call up. And so I've said, you know, after the a day after being on the set is when when we were in some heavy uh, scenes, and I had to, especially the death scenes when uh, Mary's dying, I would be pretty unsociable for maybe a, another day I'm after that. Saying. Yeah. Mm, I should imagine we... it takes a toll on you. Should we it stick... did back then. Yeah. Shall we stick with the theme of the set for a second? Um, sure. And we can move on to maybe uh, the next question, which is a little bit more upbeat. Um, what was the atmosphere like on set? I mean, was there, you know, obviously when you're in a very sort of intense situation, there has to be moments of humour. Um, to sort of break things up, to sort of, you know, break the ice. Um, can you recall anything, you know, that's sort of really funny that happened during the recording sessions that sort of, you know, cracked you up and sort of, you know, lightened the mood for a bit? Well, I don't re really remember much of anything about the recording sessions right. in the sounds in the sound studio, right. and because. And that was really such a small part of it. We we were in the sound studio, I guess, a total of three days for me. And mm. maybe Dave was in there for a day. And uh, Angela, probably, um, I'm sorry, Donna was probably in there for a day, maybe two. I know uh, Monica was in there for at least two days, possibly a third. And our paths crossed on, on, on paths crossed only one day that I recall, where wow. uh, Monica and I wow. were in the studio together. So when when you think about well, what you think about the work we did, it's nothing like I'd think about it. We were on it's all stage work for me. We were on the stage, and that's where the work was done, and yeah, all the work yeah, were done cap, there yeah. with the mo capping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, well, yeah. I mean. We were wired and they were filming it too. So for me, it was like a f filmmaking project, although we were wearing these strange costumes. So for me, I look at it that way. Now, in, in terms of what was the mood on the set like on those, on those sets, mm -hmm. because that's, we, there were, for the mood to be anything but, oh, I'll, okay, this is a good question. I'm, I'm glad you asked now. I'm going to think more carefully about this. On the days when it was, everyone together mm -hmm. uh, where we were going to shoot two or three scenes, usually cut scenes where multiple characters interact. Those were fairly stressful days. They, I mean, they were fun, but uh, Donna was is kind of like the character she plays. She's just kind of difficult in some ways sometimes. I mean, she's a nice, nice woman, extremely talented, but she's 
she I think maybe she views herself as in a class above where I was in uh, in terms of skill or credits <laughs> because uh -huh. I hadn't been a professional actor in her scene so for as far as she was concerned I had just come in off the street and uh I think she didn't really give me enough credit for the work I had done because I hadn't been participating in the Tokyo acting scene with her or or voice recording scene and so that's okay I mean I, I didn't mind that part but uh, Monica, I don't know, maybe I'm just a difficult person. It was pretty stressful on the days when, when we were all together there. Dave and I, no problem. I didn't, we only had the one scene together in the meat locker where we played together. And, uh -huh. and that went really well. The rest of the time we were recording on, on our own. So oh, okay. I do remember a stressful day uh, on the set with Monica. I, I just think Monica and I were kind of like, you know, that love-hate kind of wheel that goes around there's like a love becomes so close to hate becomes goes back around where you're just like in the friend zone and then you're back around towards you could be lovers or you might be you might hate each other well we were both yeah. you know already spoken for we were both in relationships so it wasn't any opportunity for us to d explore whether we might actually get along but there were sparks when we were together so we were a sparky type couple and that mm. I think that really worked for us. I don't I uh I'm very pleased may have come across in, you know, yeah, well, the there was chemistry a lot between of, James and Mary or Maria. Were, and and Maria, there was a lot of energy between us. And most importantly, since she had studied acting and I had studied acting, and we had never really done anything with it because we were both both in business. We actually put more into it than most people ever would. Most professional actors would have looked at it and measured the number of hours before they got to go to their next job and mm -hmm. how much they're paying me. We both looked at this as like, this may be the one big shot I have to do something. Yes. And there was no holding back. And when she and I were working together, we were really pushing each other, kind of like that movie Rush, where the two drivers are antagonistic toward each other but they raise each other's game yeah it was mm. it was it was intense and i really look back on it and that was that was a uh, it was tense but it was very very satisfying especially when we knew we had done a good job now when that was on the stage we took that over when we went into the recording uh booth we're alone and uh, but you were able to I was able to. I'm sure she did too, because her performance is fabulous in that game. So yeah. you, you were able to Absolutely. just replay what you did on the stage with each other, uh, or to bring up that mood. Gosh, she was great at that. So the mood was, generally speaking, uh, tense. Actually, a little bit frustrating. And then once the cutscenes that involved the other players were gone um, or if it was just Ava and I and the team it got very playful and um, <laughs> towards the end see because I was I did about three months of mocap with them uh, Dave was in there for a couple of weeks uh, Donna a slightly less and Monica slightly more maybe about a month in total so I mean, I'm more possibly two months. I really don't know how much mocap they did with uh, Monica, but I know I was there three months, and I remember the last sessions because I, you know, I was doing the falls, and I said, "Please put all the falls to the end, right, in case I hurt myself." <laughs> and <laughs> so all the stupid stuff you don't think about because you're just playing, you know. I mean, the people don't think that those were really people falling when the characters in the game fall down. <laughs> they really were. This, and, is, myth. And, this and, is a bit of myth. Okay, now you've got to get in a rowboat and row the boat. And none of these people had ever rowed a boat before. Or you've got to all right, pick up the chainsaw and start the chainsaw. And they'd made a little cardboard thing I was supposed to pick up. And none of them had ever, <laughs> none of them had ever used a chainsaw. They might not have even seen one. And, and so here was I. I used to design chainsaws when I was working in, in 
not that long ago in industrial designs. So, so I'm, uh, okay, well, you got to do it like this, right? And they're like, oh, great. So we, we had a great time. And uh, okay, keep running. Yes, keep running. And uh, so, yeah, it got very playful on the set because they were, they were cheerful and uh and i was cheerful when 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 there wasn't like a pissing contest going on on the stage <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, talking about funny that let's just ask something um whose idea was that animation with a chainsaw you know if you just don't don't move james and after a while he just gets a chainsaw and starts screaming uh his primal scream uh, yeah. Yeah. What's your idea? Was it your idea? Oh no, no, no. That uh, they said they because... wanted me to scream. They, they they told me they wanted me. To scream. <laughs> I'm gonna guess it was uh, it was either uh, uh, Ito or it could have been Sato. Man, that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Is that what happens? It suddenly, yeah, uh, I'm bad. Yeah, I was I was like a I was like having a coffee, and I was okay. I'm gonna just stop for a while to sip my coffee. And then he just ah, <laughs> and then there's coffee all over my living room. Well, that's a very. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that. You know, it's uh, a funny story about the scream. Is I was at a convention in uh, uh, Portland years ago, and a guy came up to me, and I and he was hovering around the outside. I was talking to several other people, and he was hovering and kind of looking at me, and and I had my name tag on, and I think he was looking at my name tag, and then finally he got a clearing. He came in, are are you guys see he? I said, yes. <laughs> Are you the guy see he? Well, I, I am the guy see he. Do the chainsaw thing. I'm like, what are you talking about? I had no idea what he was talking about. I'd, I'd never seen the game. I'd never seen the chainsaw scene. I had no idea they were going to make the scene. They said, do this scream thing. Uh, and again, it was one of those cases where they started, okay, well, can you do some screams? And I said, well, hold on, hold on. We have all these other scenes to record. Let's do all the screens on the last day. What do you say, fellas? That makes sense to you? Oh, oh okay. Yeah, that's kind of logical. <laughs> I was really yeah, because you're going to need your voice. <laughs> yeah, I really burned out the voice doing the screams on that one. So, mm. um, yeah, that's mm -hmm. my primal scream. And no, it wasn't my idea. It was their idea. And it is... Uh, shocking when it happens the first time and yeah because you know. you're just not expecting that but that's james right he there's the, all that pent-up frustration in there and yeah. he uh, you it only happens with the chainsaw correct so you've you've already yeah, played, you've, just... you've already played the game and beaten it or gotten to the end once because you cannot get the chainsaw until yeah. you played it once so then in the second and third playthroughs, they start getting uh, playful. Like you can't get the dog ending, I think, in the first playthrough either. You've got to have beaten it once. And, yeah. and it was definitely Sato who explained to me about Easter eggs and convinced me to record certain things that I was against recording. I, I, just to show you how out of place I was, here's, here's me like imagining my great final I, i'm finally being recognized for my theatrical skills and now they want me to denigrate this incredible performance <laughs> i've just laid down with these stupid scenes and a dog after that <laughs> you know, incredibly moving uh emotional experience of that is silent hill too and and he said well you know okay guy but <laughs> um he didn't he didn't say come down off your high horse and, and get real he, but he might have he might have said that <laughs> he said look you know it's a game and and when there's kids are playing it we put these things in it we hide these things and call it easter eggs so if you know please just do it for for me okay just do it for me uh, 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 okay if you ask that way i'll do it <laughs> i think about how, how silly i was at the time you know how ignorant i was of the way things of the way the game industry works i mean that the fact that he even bothered to, to talk nicely to me about it is amazing <laughs> you should have just said just do it stupid <laughs> <laughs> do it you're just the actor man what are you talking about just do it <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. no wonder they haven't hired me again <laughs> no return of james sunderland uh, doesn't play um, the, doesn't play are you the all chains, so <laughs> um are you satisfied with that answer um 
because <laughs> uh, because the next question sort of ties in with uh, what you were talking about before with um, your co-actors. Uh, now, in some ways, it's sort of evident that you seem to have made some good, you know, lifelong friends during the recording of Silent Hill 2. Um, David Shoffley, for instance, you seem to be really close with. Uh, was there any, would you say, pivotal moments between the two of you on set that may have caused um, this friendship or um, anything else, really? I mean, you were talking about that one scene. Maybe we can get some more insight. Oh, gosh. You know, I wish I could say that there was something in particular, but I'll say that he was the the only other man, foreign man there. So, I mean, unless I'm missing somebody, I hate to to think that I would be missing a, a you know, a bro or something or another <laughs> another guy who was there. So, there was me and a bunch of women and him. <laughs> and then all the Japanese people who were they're, yeah. like, they're like, they have their own culture and so forth and they're yeah. they were in their own world so they would often be chatting as if we didn't exist right then we would be talking as if they didn't exist so we were we we're in our own spheres so it was dave and i there mm -hmm. um let's see when did i'm not really sure how we uh connected after it was done or how it blossomed into a friendship but you know, you, I, I take it at least, Dave. I don't know, Roger. We've not met, but you guys are getting, you're, you're beyond your maybe beyond your twenties now, and I'm out. Twenty-four. Yeah. I'm thirty-seven. Okay, so you're. For me. Yeah, you, you're grown-up uh, men, and and uh, uh, still a young woman, but especially for the men, as you get older, it's harder to make new friends, yep. and. Yes one of the good pieces of advice that men in their 20s and even in their teens should take to heart is that keep your friends close as you get older because they're very important and um, and I was lucky to be because I live in Japan and my friends are pretty much all back in the US from my from my youth and uh, I was able to meet Dave and he's married he's got three children i'm married i have four children we like to ride motorcycles we work we have pretty much our own businesses so we we have flexible schedules we're free independent thinkers we have a lot in common and um yeah so it's been really nice that it that the, we didn't immediately become friends it grew slowly was, over yeah. time yeah yeah it really mm. took a long time but uh now he's i would say one of my best my best friends that's amazing truly amazing yeah it really <laughs> is i mean there's a there's a gift that keeps on giving from from silent hill too and uh mm -hmm. as much as i respect the team silent people i've never heard from one of them since i, I had a, well i shouldn't say that i had a brief conversation with uh sato over the internet once but i'm not really haven't heard from any of the others I mean, I mean, it's very... Monica, I, Monica's, um, you know, she lives in L.A. and it was great to see her again when Dave and I went over there. But uh, I have, you know, just the distance involved makes it difficult. Yeah. yeah. Understandable. <laughs> so that's how I uh, met uh, Dave and we we should probably go out riding again we we used to ride the bikes outside tokyo the, our motorcycles but i haven't when you see when you see him again send him a hug because he's awesome <laughs> oh thank you yeah he really is awesome and he's I still, yeah, he I, is awesome yeah I, mean, you know, I got I, I got in trouble once because of one of his lines <laughs> which one <laughs> i was um i was drunk so i was in a pub and there was this copper this police guy yep and i just look at him Put the finger in my head and say, killing a person is no big deal. Oh, no. <laughs> I just put a gun to the head. Wow. Oh, yeah. said, what did you say? Oh. Uh, Silent Hill 2, uh, you play video games? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sober, like, instantly. Like, oh, I'm sober. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that'll sober better you. Better go home yes. now. Yeah, better go home now. 
Sun your chi um actually sobers you up as well. Yeah. Good cure yeah. good cure for a hangover, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see, yeah. Okay, so are we moving on? Sure. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's a short on. one, Roger. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, well, I don't, you probably be very a busy guy and you don't, don't play games like a PlayStation 3 games or something like that, right, guy? No, I don't. Yeah, so, well, the, the, no, no, because um, we got that this, like, this really good games coming, coming back um, with this team of uh, emotions and stuff, like a um, Walking Dead game and The Last of Us. Um, they've been praised uh, mostly because of the emotional and human aspects of the narrative. You know, they deal with issues like the death of a loved one and physical and psychological abuse. And um, the question is, do you think it's kind of a, a di direct influence from Silent Hill 2? Because I can't remember at the time any game touching that kind of subject. So it was a kind of first yeah, one? Yeah, I do believe it was... Silent Hill 2 was honestly one of the first games that I can remember that really touched upon something that heavy. Mm. Um, I'm, yeah. sure it's a, I'm sure it's an influence, but I'm not sure if it's a uh, purposeful in that way. I believe that what's happened is the audiences are growing up, number one, and number two, the game industry is disintegrating towards uh, niche producers and smaller uh, production companies and those two things uh, happening at the same time have allowed or actually required the the makers to seek something real to seek to provide a more real experience and ultimately the only thing that matters are the relationships between people not none of the technology and all that stuff so even the 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 shoot 'em up games are uh going to be increasingly dealing with the relationships between the characters so as you as you build games that ex are designed to explore the relationships between characters, you're necessarily going to have to touch on these these heavier, uh, hidden, uh, yeah. lifelong scar type. Uh, yeah. This is like a this Silent Hill game is the game that everybody, people are not ashamed to say, oh, I cried when I played that game. Yeah. You know? Because... Yeah. Mm. And sorry to interrupt you. Um, and also, you got like um, teenagers when they first play the game. They there are no, they have no children. They're not married, so they kind of experience this loss and sadness that they they didn't know about it at the time. So I think that was one of the most uh, rich games that someone can play. Because it wasn't just about killing monsters in a foggy town, mm. and uh, I think that people people that were uh, doing the like uh, the Walking Dead game in The Last of Us, they they play that and they they kind of try to emulate, you know, going going forward with this this thing of let's let's bring up an adult experience, let's touch some some serious subjects. Yeah, very much so, Roger. I agree with you. Yeah. Mm, I, I, I'm sure that, that we're going to see more games like that because they can be done. Well, there's a couple of reasons, but like I said, the demographics, there's, there's an aging audience of players are looking for a richer experience, something that touches their, their emotions deeply. And then you're going to be wanting to produce games for less money because there's more, more risk and more diversity in the types of platforms and interests that are out there mm -hmm. so it's harder to concentrate money on one subject you see even major game companies closing now yeah. to, to focus on now i i keep an eye on the game industry be and and where the money is moving and what people are thinking as as a, a business and not as a player and it and i'm 
it wouldn't surprise me that you'll see more of these psychological uh, dramas as opposed to technological dramas. That could yeah. be good for us. And I think that also maybe ties in a little bit uh, with the fact that um, the I think the gap between um, the gaming and the movie movie industry is closing in, and um, I think. You know, to touch upon something as basic and well, not as basic, but as fundamental as human emotion, I think you know that's a direct effect of that. Simply that the gap is closing. Mm. Yeah. You know, what surprised me the most, and and was that there were fans who were pretty angry at James, and some of that anger, you know came through pretty clearly that surprised me so and it still surprises me because of you know where my mind was at my head was at in playing in the game so yeah it was it, and when I understood why they were angry I mean are, are we dealing with spoilers here I guess we at this point in time, 14, 15 I, years I, I, later. I think at this point it's about. safe to say that you know you can go ahead. It's clear. <laughs> yeah, you can go ahead. Daddy killed. Everybody, my... everybody, everybody knows that you're the dog. Yeah. <laughs> the, the dog ending. The, the dog is you. That's the real. Basically, end. yeah. Basically, they're they're facing Daddy killing Mommy, and that's really heavy. It is, yeah. Yeah. So, no wonder they were angry. And, and some of them didn't even want to talk about it. You know, it's very, mm. it's no way that it could have been a euthanasia scenario. It has to be, he, he murdered her. And, and now we, we want justice, right? Where's the, where, where's the prison? Well, and, and, again, and where, where, why hasn't he been captured yet? That kind of a thing. And I'm like, again, <laughs> I bet now I'm looking over my shoulder. Right, right. Um, the answer there is a perfect segue into the next question. Um, yes, you, I was just if you're like, if you're like happy to move on. Sure. Um, in past interviews, you've mentioned like the leave ending as being the one that would be the most appropriate and sensible for James as his character stands. Um, what do you think James should have done after he left Silent Hill with Laura? You know, um, do you think he would have um, turned himself into the, into the police as sort of a crisis of conscience? Um, would he have adopted Laura, or would he have maybe put her into an orphanage? Um, give us a brief sort of um, moral analysis of where you see the guy going from there. You know, James going from there. Okay. Um, yeah. Just to clarify, I said, and I still say, that I like the leave ending for me. Yep. That's the way I would want it to end. Mm -hmm. And I've since figured out from the evidence that Team Silence uh, core ending, I won't call it canon, we'll just call it the one they put the most effort into. Mm -hmm. Uh, that uh, would be is not. Voice. That's not me, uh, because I I will be the last man standing. Yeah. So that's just me, and I don't know if that. I, I'm sure in some very deep level it connects to my words and how they sound to you when you talk to me, and or when you listen to what I say. Is that I I will be the last person standing. Yep. I won't. So, committing suicide would not have worked out. I would have, I would resolve some, my yeah, yeah. Karma debt in another way. Yep. And the other way I would resolve it in this case is easy it's the leave ending. And that is me adopting Laura, not remarrying, just taking care of her, living a private life, and mm -hmm. being extremely protective of her, almost to the point of being troublesome, right? Where she's growing up. And it's time to step back and recognize that she's a young woman and she's got to socialize, otherwise her life will not be happy and, you know, understanding that as well and, you know, not being a pain in the ass as she starts to date, just making sure that her people who want to take her out on a date know that she's not alone and that they're at risk if they mess with her. So. 
that I'd be that kind of dad for her. And uh, someone wrote a scenario. They'd have an angry James with a chainsaw after them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they would. Uh, <laughs> someone wrote a scenario and suggested that uh, Laura gets a letter from Silent Hill, and it's from from Mary, and she takes off because she she knows if she so shows it to James, he he'll stop her from going. But uh, she leaves, and she leaves a letter for James as a possible sequel. And I thought that sounded like a great setup for a sequel. Uh -huh. And James gets to go back mm, and you know, play the hero in the second round instead of the the evil guy who's twisted. <laughs> Dark and sad in the first one. Redeem himself a bit. <laughs> I could, yeah, I bit could of a chance myself. of redemption there. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know I liked that one, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a classic. Um, are you satisfied and happy with that? And happy to move on? Would you have turned yourself into the police, though? That's the question. No. 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 <laughs> Before the police? For what? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever looked at my page? <laughs> oh, my <old> page. <laughs> uh, well, uh, the um... state. What basically what you're asking me? Would I turn myself into the state? To the state? No, no, probably to not. The state. No, probably not. I'm an I'm an anarchist. Okay. I don't <laughs> the state. Okay. I'm an anti-statist. <laughs> no. Okay. It was bad enough. I, I have enough to deal with with myself if I'm James. That's it, you know. <laughs> One less burden you don't need. You know, to... need to give yourself a break. <laughs> yeah. um, so, shall we carry on then? Uh, we're almost, we're, um, we're about to wrap this up actually. We just have one more thing to ask. Um, uh, now, we know that in some past interviews there has been mention of a potential Let's Play where you sort of um, take part and uh, watch and commentate over Silent Hill 2 gameplay. Maybe not through the entire game, but maybe certain key scenes, you know. Um, and now, if this was for, I don't know, a good cause or something, charity, um, would you maybe consider participating? You know, something like this? I would like to do that. It would be fun. I... But... I've watched a couple of Let's Plays and um in fact you know who likes let's plays is my 11 year old daughter she watches them all the time mm -hmm. now and i'm mm -hmm. it always surprises me but she she knows a lot about the latest games that are out because she watches the let's plays we don't, we don't have the game system here so <clears throat> we have a Wii. <laughs> so <laughs> She can play Shattered Ma Memories. She gets to play Mario Kart. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All uh, differently. Yeah, so... Pyramid Head uh, Edition. Yeah, right. So, yeah, right. So <laughs> she's got, she's um, <laughs> watching these Let's Plays, and I'm and she said, Dad, you gotta see this one. I'm gonna watch it. And my impression is the Let's Plays are pretty light-hearted fare. There's lots of banter and Mm. chat and so forth and I'm not yeah. sure that it's supposed to be like a more fun thing you know like yeah yeah so I'd have to I don't know I'd have to work myself up for that I I'm not sure that I'm ready to do a let's play of Silent Hill 2 <laughs> uh you know maybe I could do a let's play of another game but yeah. I, I I would do it technically uh making those things to I, I like to do a good job and I, I just I, sitting down and just random, uh, not randomly, but just playing the game and talking as I go through. Ah, one, I got close to that with one of the things I did. I, I played the uh, what do you call that? The the, the arcade game. Yeah, that's Hill. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh. I remember that. Yeah, okay. that was funny. And then I made a video of that, and that. I yeah, yes. boy die or something. Yeah, yeah, that was that was <laughs> Triangle Boy. I remember triangle that boy. Boy. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's. But I don't know if I could keep that up for what you know, thirty <laughs> minutes or something. So, I think what I'd rather do is a 
what do they call that? It's you, you get the deluxe version of the, the video program, like the DVD, the direct, no, what do you call it? The special edition. Yeah. And, and on a, one of the tracks, they have either one of the actors or the director is oh, yeah. giving commentary. Director yeah. commentary. There you go. So yeah. well, I wasn't the director, but I would do the actor's commentary on mm -hmm. uh, maybe the cutscenes. So I think I might do that. Plus, making the video and and ripping as you're playing the game and so forth. I don't have the game console. I, I have some games, but I don't have the console and I don't have the equipment to record it. So that, that's a lot of work. Now, if somebody out there listening today wants to put together a video for me to to do this to, to record the audio for, I'd be happy to do that. But there's a lot of work that goes into editing together a decent program and I don't want it to run more than say 10 minutes at the most so it would have to be a selection of scenes and then then I'd get Dave to come in and we could we could talk through some fun stuff that, then it would be it'd be more entertaining maybe we could get Monica to do it long wow, distance that'd be amazing. yeah that would be amazing yes it would be. be very interesting to hear so there you go a little long-winded answer I would do it but I'm not interested in doing a, a traditional let's play i would be more interested in doing like a if someone provided the gameplay and provided everything else you know you just stand for the audio that would be something you would well let me case. ask you guys some questions sure mm -hmm. okay <laughs> you know you you've come to me and you you've asked me to talk about my experiences but you know more about it as players than i do mm -hmm. so what uh part of the game brings you to tears or brought you to tears in the first time when you played it what was it oh god um I think, I think if i can start if you guys sure. don't mind um mm -hmm. the latest first. for me for me it was just even thinking about it now it almost brought me to tears um thinking about <laughs> when he says goodbye to um mary you know or however the ending is and uh, just that final letter that just absolutely <laughs> Yeah, that just brought me to tears. It was, it was a very powerful, emotional moment for me. Mary's, um, Mary's letter, yeah. Yeah, Mary's letter and just that final scene, you know, where he's sitting next to her and she's laying down. Um, I was also very shocked um, the first time I figured out what had actually happened. You know, some things dawned on me while I was playing, but um, never anything like that. So it was just fantastic. The, the whole game was just one of those things that I will never, ever forget. And I want to personally thank you, Guy, for um, making that happen by playing James. Mm, thank you. What about you guys? Roger. Dave. Dave. <laughs> You're deferring to me as usual. <laughs> um, I Stop would... being so humble. <laughs> um, I would... Um, I would actually say that it's the it's the the long hallway scene just before um, just, just 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 before the end um, where um, James is obviously playing over something in his head from Mary where she's saying you know uh, you know I bought you some oh, yeah. flowers and she's saying I don't want any flowers um, I found that to be very moving um, yeah I agree. There was something I deliberately uh, I deliberately took my time walking up that hallway so I could hear the entire conversation. Um, it always gets to me every time. It's just amazing, I think. You can just see the duality of their relationship, you know. And also, I just she was scared on one hand, and she also was I just and... I just think the voice acting there between you know the two is absolutely phenomenal. Mm. Mm. Roger. Um. When I, first, <laughs> when I first played the game, um, I had a friend of mine, a really good friend of mine, that um, committed suicide like uh, two months ago. And um, and I kind of was still in shock because I couldn't cry and I was just, okay, he's dead, went to his funeral. So I got that inside me. And um, when I play the game and we get to the part of the letter, and Mary's reading the letter, and uh, she sounds tired, not angry, like just sad and tired and just I had enough of this. So I just had to, I went out for a cigarette and I just start crying, like couldn't stop. 
because it was bringing up all the thing that happened with my friend. So that still gets me every time because it takes me back to when that happened. So wow. That's it. Yeah, I've heard from some other people that there were events in their life that it allowed them to release bottled up feelings through. And uh, I, it was that way for me too, as you guys now know. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it was, yeah, it was pretty intense. It, it'll be, oh, so let's see. Uh, though all of those, uh, well, I, I mean, all those experiences are, are part of my experience too, losing someone to suicide and way before their time. And yeah. then uh, that scene with in the long hallway, which for me is the most important, most revealing scene for me in the, in, in the, the production. And then uh, of course the bedside scenes with Mary are mm -hmm. maybe the most, uh, most difficult emotionally. So you, yeah, you've hit, hit three very <laughs> significant parts. Well, mm. let's see, do I have another question about it then? Uh, <laughs> that was pretty heavy. <laughs> Let's go go yeah. for something lighter. Which was which were the uh, the most entertaining or, or light or, or uh, oh that is easy. interesting part of the game. I mean, in, in, from an entertainment per, from, from a humorous perspective. <laughs> go go. Well, let's me, start with is... Roger this time because oh, okay, okay. we'll enough. save Sorry. you for last, Christina. <laughs> Roger. Yeah. Most entertaining well, and and humorous. I I love Eddie. I think Eddie's so funny. And um, I always liked the first time we met him in an in apartment, and he's throwing up. And I was keep getting back to see what he would say next. And there's a part, I think if you do that for the fourth time, he says, you're not supposed to go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, okay, okay, I'll keep playing then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's one of my favorite moments. Just getting back and he's throwing up and then yeah. when all the, oh, the dialogues options and he says something like you was supposed to go somewhere else go go yeah no that's funny I I, yeah. I forgot about all of those second takes right and I didn't get I didn't uh, have such a big I, I think my lines in most of those cases were like Oh yeah, right. Oh <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, right. Yeah. Yes, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but those guys got to say some cool stuff, and then I, I forgot we took it. And then one time I was watching a cutscene someone had put up, and that that suddenly came on. It was where he goes back, and and then and hears that, and I'm thinking, that's really strange. Oh yeah, it's a game. They would have to have done that in case the player went back. <laughs> and we didn't think of it that way when we were recording. We thought of it more like a movie. So I Dave, think Angela, Angela yeah. does the same thing as well. If you come back, oh, definitely, yeah, she does, yeah. Oh, is it just those two that do that? No one else? Uh, yeah, yeah, because Mary, no, Mary's just when she's in the hospital, she just in the bed, so I think doesn't say anything. I see. Can't You're remember. just saying that it's comfy. Uh. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> go away, let me sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, what's uh, your, yeah. uh, Dave, what's your uh, yeah, funniest right, memory? Priceless. Um, my one, well, it's probably unintentionally funny, but that sort of describes my weird sense of humour that I've got anyway. Um, and that's after that incredibly heavy scene with Angela and James where um, he confronts the abstract daddy. Um, I've always found it really sort of um, funny that she sort of picks the TV up and sort of throws it on him. <laughs> 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 So I think someone wrote a, a, a paper on that at college, the whole dissertation on the uh, the throwing of the television and the significance <laughs> of that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you are aware that a lot of people write their uh, their imagine. papers at university on these on this this game. Yeah, you know? I have a friend that yeah. did on the sexuality <laughs> theme of Pyramid Head and everything. There's probably, um, some, no. there's probably some TV evangelist on the TV at the time, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had a fan write to me very earnestly just recently and say, uh, are, are, uh, I've, I've finally cracked it. I, James Sunderland is a Freemason. <laughs> Isn't he? And you're a Freemason, aren't you? <laughs> and I was like, wow, it took you long enough <laughs> to figure that one out. Huh? <laughs> That's a Freemason. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just wait a minute uh, while I Google that. You know, give me yeah. a second. <laughs> <laughs> have you heard of the Freemasons? No, have you heard of the Freemasons? <laughs> like, <laughs> let me see. Yeah, actually, I think I have. <laughs> Christina? Yeah. Um, oh, well, some of those scenes were definitely my favorite ones. So this time I had my thunder stolen, but it's only fair enough. <laughs> um, Oh, I gotta say, I have to say two examples. First of all, that classic line, you know, how can you just sit there eating pizza? This town is full of, is full of monsters. I think I got it the other way around, but you get the gist of it. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> this town and, is full um, of pizza, did you just say? <laughs> this town is full of monsters. This town is full of pizza. Eating monsters. Yeah, eating monsters. You said they're eating monsters. Um... <laughs> Yeah. Um, and also, for some reason, I don't know why, I'm kind of quirky like that, too. Um, that scene where Mayor, uh, pardon, Maria and James are in the hospital and she helps him open the refrigerator, you know, to retrieve the lead ring. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know why, oh. but just whenever she gives him the ring and he's like, thanks. That just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's funny too. He just says it so casually. <laughs> thanks, yeah. <laughs> I just love that scene. I don't know. I just yeah, always I remember. Yeah, that's cool. I'm really that's glad cool. to hear you say that because <laughs> that's one of those cringe scenes. When I see that one, I cringe because, <laughs> right? Because they, you know, there was no explanation for why I'm saying thanks. Like, and we didn't. I didn't know what the scene was. I'm just saying. <laughs> Thanks. It sounds like she gave you a can of soda. They probably let me do Thanks. like one take of it or something, and like, oh yeah, that's good. <laughs> she may as well asked you, you know, to marry her, and you would have been like, you know, thanks for the ring. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Now some thanks. of them, yeah, some of them, yeah, some of, yeah. Well, okay, there we go. Some of the lines I listen to today, and I, oh man, I wish I could do that one again. Uh, I, I wish they had told me what that scene was going to be when when I did it honestly speaking uh, in the sound studio the video that was available for us to see to 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 you know like okay well this is what it's going to look like in the game as opposed to the live work we did on the stage we didn't do all the little lines like thanks and, and the little uh, tiny lines that are part of game mm. In, on the stage, because there's no mocap required. They, they'd already done it for something. Or, or, or I just don't remember that being... <laughs> I do remember cringing when I hear that line. <laughs> there's a couple of others, and I'm not going to accept uh, the only way that that could happen, because we were so serious about this, is that um, <laughs> we didn't know that it was going to be used in that way. Well, maybe they used... Yeah, anyway. I'm beat that to death. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm glad you like it, though. Because <laughs> that other <laughs> line... Absolutely hilarious. The, um, this town is full of monsters. How can you sit there eating pizza? <laughs> that line... I mean, I didn't want to do it. As, as, as I'm famous, right? I'm not wanting to do that line. And and they're like, no, no. I mean, this is really going to be funny. I said, well, nobody's going to say this town is full of monsters. <laughs> No, no, but the town is full of monsters. Yeah, but we're not going to say the town is full of monsters. We're going to, you know, they're... You know. It's just a thing that pizza and monsters in the same sentence. Yeah. yeah. It's like, no, no, no. Okay, well, look, all right, all right, well, is it possible we can maybe, you know, you can re rewrite that line? And then there's a little huddle and they talk it through. And no, 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 we, we need it like this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
I, try, I tried to say it with dignity. <laughs> Shakespearean delivery. Yeah, right. Thou town is thou full of thou monsters. <laughs> How canst thou sit there and eat devour pizza? Uh, uh, yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't think I could do it as good again now. It's... It came out like the first time. I'd probably start laughing when I was doing it now. Wow. Well, it obviously turned out for the best anyway, even if it was a little yeah. more humorous. <laughs> it's a classic. It's a classic line from it me. Is, it is. It's a fan favorite. Mm. I've seen t-shirts with that. They're <laughs> eating. <laughs> this town is... Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, is there any other favorite lines that you want me to say before I go? Um... Whatever, whatever you want. Honestly, we were actually just about to ask you because we were about to wrap this up. Um, so whatever you want, you have free reign. Free reign. You're mm. some iconic James. Yeah, do some iconic James. You better do something about that cough, Christina. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Here comes the James with the pillow. Uh oh! I better wash myself. Like <laughs> that, Eddie. Have you gone nuts? <laughs> oh god. You better do oh, something about that cough, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because you don't want me to do something about it. Mm. <laughs> so you better. Uh, um, yeah, was it Mary? <laughs> no. You're not. Oh, amazing. That is very, very, yeah. Uh, oh, just your, just your hair yeah, you could be her twin. Just your hair and clothes are different. Wow, <laughs> I'm nerding <laughs> so hard now. I know. I'm sorry. You were sort of incapacitated by um, Mr. <laughs> CT's awesomeness here. So, <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, um, oh, wait. Okay, I got a. I got a list of them. Okay. Uh, Don't worry, I'm not crazy. At least I don't think so. <laughs> this one, this one's heavy. I was weak. That's why I needed you. Needed Hi, someone yeah. to punish me for my sins. But that's all over now. I know the truth. Now it's time to end this. <laughs> Can you just imagine how you've been Back recording the lines and then everybody sort of like sniggering in the background while you're doing it? Yeah, right. You guys are helping me, really. <laughs> you break the boom. No, we, no, we take you seriously. We sw we're... We're how are you, you know that. How do you know about that? Aren't you Maria? <laughs> I'm not your Mary. Did you, see, did you see the one where I did Maria, where I played Maria, the video? Yes, yeah, that was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Did you like that? Yeah, Wasn't so I good? Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to. Pr I, some of the fans have said that I was a little, you know, l l uh, what would you call it? One dimensional. I didn't have enough, you know, depth in my character there. So I thought, uh, mm. well, maybe no, they weren't fans. Yeah. They were, they were my dude. <laughs> I know who that That'd was <laughs> who said that. <laughs> uh, but uh, so I wanted to, you know, like stretch, flex my, uh, my, my, uh, my acting cred there and, and take on a really tough role. So I did Maria. <laughs> mm. <laughs> All right. Um, so All right. Um, we should wrap this. Guy, look, it has been a, an absolute pleasure to have you here. Um, thank you so much for being thank here. You very much, uh, we, I think we're going to try to wrap this up now because we know you're a very busy guy. <laughs> again, pun not intended. Um, and, you know, again, we just want to thank you for this fantastic opportunity. And I'm sure the fans out there, were, out there will enjoy listening to these answers. Um, so just a sincere thank you. And my that is a wrap pleasure. pretty much. <laughs> Cheers, pleasure. guys. Bye. Thanks. Cheers, guys. Thank Goodbye. Thank you. Thanks thank you for having me. Thank you. All right. Thank take you, care. Thank Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
bad things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. move forward and be in the moment and, and yeah, and don't don't hold a grudge. Yeah, it's exactly. The hardest part. It's the yeah. hardest. So, I'm able to do that, and, and so it's a little hard digging into that while we were recording to go back and call up. And so I've said, you know, after the a day after being on the set is when when we were in some heavy uh, scenes, and I had to. Especially the death scenes when uh, Mary's dying, I would be pretty unsociable for maybe a, another day I'm after that. Oh. Yeah, mm. I we... imagine it takes a toll on you. Should we? It stick... did it back then. Yeah. Shall we stick with the theme of the set for a second? Um, sure. And we can move on to maybe uh, the next question, which is a little bit more upbeat. Um, what was the atmosphere like on set? I mean, was there, you know, obviously when you're in a very sort of intense situation, there has to be moments of humour um, to sort of break things up, to sort of, you know, break the ice. Um, can you recall anything, you know, that's sort of really funny that happened during the recording sessions that sort of, you know, cracked you up and sort of, you know, lightened the mood for a bit? Well, I don't re really remember much of anything about the recording sessions right. in the sounds in the sound studio right. and because that was really such a small part of it we we were in the sound studio i guess a total of three days for me and mm. maybe dave was in there for a day and uh, angela probably um, i'm sorry donna was probably in there for a day maybe two I know uh, Monica was in there for at least two days, possibly a third, and our paths crossed on, on, on paths crossed only one day that I recall, where wow. uh, Monica and I wow. were in the studio together. So when when you think about well, what you think about the work we did, it's nothing like I'd think about it. We were on it's all stage work for me we were on the stage and that's where the work was done and yeah, all the recordings yeah, were done there yeah. with the mo-capping yeah mm -hmm. well yeah. i mean we were wired and they were filming it too so for me it was like a f filmmaking project although we were wearing these strange costumes so for me i look at it that way now in, in terms of what was the mood on the set like on those on those sets mm -hmm. because that's we there were for the mood to be anything but, oh, I'll t okay, this is a good question. I'm, I'm glad you asked now. I'm going to think more carefully about this. On the days when it was everyone together, mm -hmm. uh, where we were going to shoot two or three scenes, usually cut scenes where multiple characters interact, those were fairly stressful days. They, I mean, they were fun, but uh, Donna was is kind of like the character she plays she's kind of difficult in some ways sometimes i mean she's a nice nice woman is extremely talented but she's she i think maybe she views herself as in a class above where i was in uh, in terms of skill or credits <laughs> because uh -huh. i hadn't didn't been a professional actor in her scene so for as far as she was concerned i had just come in off the street and uh, I think she didn't really give me enough credit for the work I had done because I hadn't been participating in the Tokyo acting scene with her or, or voice recording scene. And so that's okay. I mean, I, I didn't mind that part, but uh, Monica, I don't know, maybe I'm just a difficult person. It was pretty stressful on the days when, when we were all together there. Dave and I, no problem. I mean, we only had the one scene together in the meat locker where we played together, and, uh -huh. and that went really well. The rest yeah. of the time we were recording on, on our own. So oh, okay. I do remember a stressful day uh, on the set with Monica. I, I just think Monica and I were kind of like, you know, that love-hate kind of wheel that goes around there's like a love becomes so close to hate becomes goes back around where you're just like in the friend zone and then you're back around towards you could be lovers or you might be you might hate each other well we were both yeah. you know already spoken for we were both in relationships so it wasn't any 
opportunity for us to d explore whether we might actually get along, but there were sparks when we were together. So we were a sparky type couple. And that, mm. I think that really worked for us. I don't, I, uh, I'm very pleased. May have come across in, you know, yeah, well, the there was chemistry a lot between of, James and Mary or Maria. Were, and, and Maria, there was a lot of energy between us. And most importantly, since she had studied acting and I had studied acting and we had never really done anything with it because we were both both in business we actually put more into it than most people ever would most professional actors would have looked at it and measured the number of hours before they got to go to their next job and mm -hmm. how much they're paying me we both looked at this as like this may be the one big shot i have to do something yes and there was no holding back and when she and i were working together we were really pushing each other kind of like that movie rush where the two drivers are antagonistic toward each other but they raise each other's game yeah it was mm. it was it was intense and i really look back on it and that was that was a uh, it was tense but it was very very satisfying especially when we knew we had done a good job now when that was on the stage we took that over when we went into the recording uh booth we're alone and but you were able i was able to i'm sure she did too because her performance is fabulous in that game so yeah you, you were able to Absolutely. just replay what you did on the stage with each other uh or to bring up that mood gosh she was great at that so the mood was generally speaking uh tense actually a little bit frustrating and then once the cutscenes that involved the other players were gone um or if it was just Dave and I and the team it got very playful and um <laughs> towards the end see cuz I was I did about 3 months of mocap with them uh Dave was in there for a couple of weeks uh Donna a slightly less and Monica slightly more maybe about a month in total so I mean, I'm more possibly two months. I really don't know how much mocap they did with uh, Monica, but I know I was there three months, and I remember the last sessions because I, you know, I was doing the falls, and I said, "Please put all the falls to the end, right, in case I hurt myself." <laughs> and <laughs> so all the stupid stuff you don't think about because you're just playing, you know. I mean, the people don't think that those were really people falling when the characters in the game fall down. <laughs> they really were. This, and, is, myth. And, this is a bit of myth. Okay, now you've cool. got to get in a rowboat and row the boat. And none of these people had ever rowed a boat before. Or you've got to all right, pick up the chainsaw and start the chainsaw. And they'd made a little cardboard thing I was supposed to pick up. And none of them had ever, <laughs> none of them had ever used a chainsaw. They might not have even seen one. And, and so here was I. I used to design chainsaws when I was working in... in not that long ago in industrial design so, so i'm uh okay well you got to do it like this right and they're like oh great so we, we had a great time and uh, okay keep running yes keep running and uh, so yeah i got very playful on the set because they were they were cheerful and uh and i was cheerful when 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 there wasn't like a pissing contest going on on the stage so uh, yeah yeah uh, talking about funny, that, let's just ask something. Um, whose idea was that animation with a chainsaw? You know, if you just don't don't move James, and after a while he just gets the chainsaw and starts screaming. Uh, his primal scream. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Was your idea? Was it your idea? Oh no, no, no. That uh, they said they because... wanted me to scream. They, they they told me they wanted me to scream. I'm gonna <laughs> guess it was uh, it was either uh, uh, Ito or it could have been Sato. Man, that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Is that what happens? It suddenly, yeah, uh, I'm bad. Yeah, I was I was like a, I was like having a coffee, and I was okay. I'm gonna just stop for a while to sip my coffee. And then he just ah, <laughs> and then there's coffee all over my living room. Well, that's a very. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that. You know, it's uh, a funny story about the scream. Is I was at a convention in uh, 
uh, Portland years ago and a guy came up to me and I and he was hovering around the outside I was talking to several other people and he was hovering and kind of looking at me and and I had my name tag on and I think he was looking at my name tag and then finally he got a clearing and he came in are, are you guys see he I said yes <laughs> are you the guy see he well I, I am the guy see he do the chainsaw thing I'm like what are you talking about? I had no idea what he was talking about. I'd, I'd never seen the game. I'd never seen the chainsaw scene. I had no idea they were going to make the scene. They said, do this scream thing. Uh, and again, it was one of those cases where they started, okay, well, can you do some screams? And I said, well, hold on, hold on. We have all these other scenes to record. Let's do all the screams on the last day. What do you say, fellas? That makes sense to you? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, that's kind of logical. <laughs> so I was really yeah, because you're going to need your voice. <laughs> yeah, I really burned out the voice doing the screams on that one. So, mm. um, yeah, that's mm -hmm. my primal scream. And no, it wasn't my idea. It was their idea. And it is uh, shocking when it happens the first time. And Yeah, because you know. you're just not expecting that. But that's James, right? He, there's all that pent-up frustration in there. And yeah. he, uh, you, it only happens with the chainsaw, correct? So you've you've already yeah, played, you, just... you've already played the game and beaten it or gotten to the end once because you cannot get the chainsaw until yeah. you played it once. So then in the second and third playthroughs they start getting uh, playful. Like you can't get the dog ending I think in the first playthrough either. You've got to yeah. beat it once. And yeah. and it was definitely Sato who explained to me about Easter eggs and convinced me to record certain things that I was against recording. I, I, but just to show you how out of place I was, here's here's me like imagining my great final, I, I'm finally being recognized for my theatrical skills and I, now they want me to denigrate this incredible performance <laughs> I've just laid down with these stupid scenes and a dog after that <laughs> you know, incredibly moving uh, emotional experience of that is Silent Hill too, and and he said, "Well, you know, okay, guy, but <laughs> um, he didn't he didn't say come down off your high horse and, and get real, he, but he might have he might have said that. <laughs> he said, look, you know, it's a game, and and when their kids are playing it, we put these things in it, we hide these things, and call Easter eggs. So if you know, please just do it for for me, okay? Just do it for me. Uh, 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 okay, if you ask that way, I'll do it." <laughs> I think about it, how, how silly I was at the time, you know, how ignorant I was of the way things, of the way the game industry works. I mean, the, the fact that he even bothered to, to talk nicely to me about it is amazing. Well, you should have just said, just do it, stupid. <laughs> do it. You're just the actor, man. Don't, what are you talking about? Just do it. <laughs> yeah. Right. No wonder they haven't hired me again. <laughs> No return of James Sunderland. Uh, <laughs> doesn't play, um, uh, doesn't play are you, others or chainsaws. <laughs> um, are you satisfied with that answer? Um, because uh, because the next question sort of ties in with uh, what you were talking about before with um, your co-actors. Uh, now, in some ways, it's sort of evident that you seem to have made some good you know, lifelong friends during the recording of Silent Hill 2. Um, David Shawfully, for instance, you seem to be really close with. Uh, was there any, <laughs> would you say, pivotal moments between the two of you on set that may have caused um, this friendship or um, anything else, really? I mean, you were talking about that one scene. Maybe we can get some more insight. Oh, gosh. You know, I wish I could say that there was something in particular but I'll say that he was the the only other man foreign man there so I mean it, unless I'm missing somebody I hate to to think that I would be missing a, a you know a bro or something or another <laughs> another guy who was there but there was me and a bunch of women and him <laughs> And then uh, the Japanese people who they're yeah. like, they're like they have their own culture and so forth, and they're yeah. they were in their own world, so they would often be chatting as if we didn't exist, right? Then we would be talking as if they didn't exist. So we were we we're in our own spheres. So it was Dave and I there. 
Um, let's see. When did I'm not really sure how we uh, connected after it was done, or how it blossomed into a friendship. But you know, you, I, I take it at least, Dave. I don't know, Roger. We've not met, but you guys are getting. You're you're beyond your maybe beyond your twenties now, and I'm out. Twenty-four. I'm, yeah. I'm thirty-seven. Okay, so you're. Six for me. Yeah, you, you're grown-up uh, men and and uh, uh, still a young woman, but especially for the men, as you get older, it's harder to make new friends. Yep. And yes. one of the good pieces of advice that men in their 20s and even in their teens should take to heart is that keep your friends close as you get older because they're very important. And, right, yeah. um, and I was lucky to be because I live in Japan and my friends are pretty much all back in the US from my from my youth and uh, I was able to meet Dave and he's married he's got three children I'm married I have four children we like to ride motorcycles we work we have pretty much our own businesses so we we have flexible schedules we're free independent thinkers we have a lot in common and um yeah so it's been really nice that it that the, we didn't immediately become friends it grew slowly it was, over yeah. time yeah yeah it really mm. took a long time but uh now he's i would say one of my best my best friends that's amazing truly amazing yeah it really is i mean there's a <laughs> there's a gift that keeps on giving from from silent hill too and uh mm -hmm. as much as i respect the team silent people i've never heard from one of them since i, I had a, well i shouldn't say that i had a brief conversation with uh, sato over the internet once but i'm not really haven't heard from any of the others mm -hmm. I mean, Monica, I, Monica's, um, you know, she lives in L.A. and it was great to see her again when Dave and I went over there. But uh, I have, you know, just the distance involved makes it difficult. Yeah. yeah. Understandable. <laughs> so that's how I uh, met uh, Dave, and we we should probably go out riding again. We we used to ride the bikes outside Tokyo, the, our motorcycles, but I haven't. When you see when you see him again, send him a hug because he's awesome. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, he really is awesome and he's I still, Yeah, he I, is awesome. Yeah. And, I, mean, you know, I got I, I got in trouble once because of one of his lines. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> I was the, I was drunk. So I was in a pub and there was this copper, this police guy. Yep. And I just look at him put the finger in my head and say killing a person is no big deal oh no <laughs> you just put a gun to the head wow oh, yeah. what did you say oh. uh silent hill 2 uh you play video games uh i'm sorry uh i'm sober like instantly like oh i'm sober yes <laughs> yeah that'll sober better you go home yes. now. yeah better go home now see that silent hill 2 um, actually sobers you up as well yeah it's yeah. cute for a hangover, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. Okay, so are we moving on? Sure. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I think sure one, Roger. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, well, I don't... You're probably be very a busy guy. You don't, don't play games like a PlayStation 3 games or something like that, right, guy? No, I don't. Yeah. So, Sorry. well... The, the, <laughs> no, no, because... Um, we got uh, this like this really good games coming coming back um, with this team of uh, emotions and stuff like a uh, Walking Dead game and The Last of Us. Um, they've been praised uh, mostly because of the emotional and human aspects of the narrative. You know, they deal with issues like the death of a loved one and physical and psychological abuse. And um, the question is, do you think it's kind of a, a direct influence from Silent Hill 2? Because I can't remember at the time any game touching that kind of subject. So it was a kind of first yeah, one. Yeah, I do believe it was... Silent Hill 2 was honestly one of the first games that I can remember that really touched upon something that heavy. Mm. Um, I'm, yeah. sure it's a, I'm sure it's an influence, but I'm not sure if it's a uh, purposeful in that way. I believe that what's happened is the... 
audiences are growing up, number one, and number two, the game industry is disintegrating towards uh, niche producers and smaller uh, production companies. And those two things uh, happening at the same time have allowed or actually required the, the makers to seek something real, to seek to provide a more real experience and ultimately the only thing that matters are the relationships between people not none of the technology and all that stuff so even the 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 shoot 'em up games are uh going to be increasingly dealing with the relationships between the characters so as you as you build games that, ex that are designed to explore the relationships between characters, you're necessarily going to have to touch on these these heavier, uh, hidden, uh, yeah. lifelong scar type. Uh, yeah. This is like it is Silent Hill games, the game that everybody, people are not ashamed to say, oh, I cried when I played that game. Yeah. You know? Because, mm. and sorry to interrupt you, um, and also, you got like um, teenagers when they first play the game, they they are no they have no children, they're not married, so they kind of experience this loss and sadness that they they didn't know about it at the time. So I think that was one of the most uh, rich games that someone can play because it wasn't just about killing monsters in a foggy town mm. and uh, I think that people people that worked up doing the like uh, the walk in that game in the last of us they they play that and they, they kind of try to emulate you know going going forward with this this thing of let's let's bring up an adult experience let's touch some some serious subjects. Yeah, very much so, Roger. I agree with you. Yeah. Mm, I, I, I'm sure <laughs> that, that we're going to see more games like that because they can be done. Well, there's a couple of reasons, but like I said, the demographics, there's, there's an aging audience of players are looking for a richer experience, something that touches their, their emotions deeply. And then you're going to be wanting to produce games for less money because there's more more risk and more diversity in the types of platforms and interests that are out there. Mm -hmm. So it's harder to concentrate money on one subject. You see even major game companies closing now yeah. to, to focus on. Now, I, I keep an eye on the game industry be, and, and where the money is moving and what people are thinking as, as it a business and not as a player and it and I'm it wouldn't surprise me that you'll see more of these psychological uh, dramas as opposed to technological dramas that could yeah. be good for us and I think that also maybe ties in a little bit uh, with the fact that um, the I think the gap between um, the gaming and the movie movie industry is closing in and um, I think you know, to touch upon something as basic and well, not as basic, but as fundamental as human emotion. I think, you know, that's a direct effect of that, simply that the gap is closing. Mm. You know, what surprised me the most and, and was that there were fans who were pretty angry at James. And some of that anger, you know, came through pretty clearly that surprised me so and it still surprises me because of you know, where my mind was at my head was at in playing in the game so yeah it was it, and when i understood why they were angry i mean are, are we dealing with spoilers here I guess we at this point in time, 14, 15 I, I years later. Point, I think at this point it's about. safe to say that you know you can go ahead. It's clear. <laughs> yeah, you can go ahead. Daddy killed. Everybody, mom. everybody, everybody knows that you're the dog. 
Yeah. <laughs> the dog ending, the, the dog is you. That's the real basically, end. yeah, basically they're, they're facing daddy killing mommy. And that's really heavy. It is, yeah. Yeah. So, no wonder they were angry. And, and someone didn't even want to talk about it. You know, it's very... It's no way that it could have been a euthanasia scenario. It has to be he he murdered her, and now we we want justice, right? Where's the where, where's the prison? Well, and, and, again, and where, where, why hasn't he been captured yet? That kind of a thing. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm, now I'm looking over my shoulder. Right, right. Um, your answer there is a perfect segue into the next question. Um, yes, you, I was just if you like, if you like, happy to move on. Sure. Um, in past interviews, you've mentioned like the leave ending as being the one that would be the most appropriate and sensible for James as his character stands. Um, what do you think James would have done after he left Silent Hill with Laura? You know, um, do you think he would have um, turned himself into the, into the police as sort of a crisis of conscience? Um, would he have adopted Laura, or would he have maybe put her into an orphanage? Um, give us a brief sort of um, moral analysis of where you see the guy going from there, you know, James going from there. Okay. Um, yeah. Just to clarify, I said, and I still say, that I like the leave ending for me. Yep. That's the way I would want it to end. Mm -hmm. And I've since figured out from the evidence that Team Silence uh, core ending, I won't call it canon, we'll just call it the one they put the most effort into, mm -hmm. games to help people acquire knowledge about things they, they need to know about or want to know about. Um, I don't actually think there's a better combination if you can be entertained and also... Um, Educate yourself at the same Draw time. Draw knowledge from it. Yeah, it's an exactly. incredibly, it's an incredibly noble pursuit. I think. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I, it's, um, it's, the trick is that... to not be thinking about learning while you're doing it. Then, if you're otherwise, it becomes work. So you've got now. There are some very popular games out there like Candy Crush, mm -hmm. which your brain is working, but there's nothing left over after you've played it. Nothing of, no, no, no value retained. Yeah. Yeah. So, like fast food for the brain. Yeah, so if you can retain something useful after having played, that's what I want to do. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. And I and I think that is needed in uh in the gaming industry nowadays, you know, with how gaming is more focused on just pure entertainment and violence, you know, and blood. Um there needs to be something else, some deeper value to it. So well, yeah, yeah, that would be Fantastic. nice. Let, if they have, but that's that's over there, right? Those those the, those are people making real, real games like mm. Silent Hill Two and yeah. Team Silent People, and I I'm not in that genre. I'm not in that uh, mm -hmm. that level. Those guys are way beyond what I do. I, I'm talking about taking the kind of really boring education software that's being rammed down students' throats or and their eyes and, and trying to. Make something that's bright, <laughs> that's 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 fun to use, yeah. and the and the academic community respects. So it comes from a basis in the academic community that's yeah. that's defensible, but and that and yet at the same time the students like it. And then if I get my way, it's going to be free. Mm -hmm. So is out of curiosity, is this the Lexica project or whatever it's called? That's right. Lexica. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Wow. Um, That's what I'm, thinking. I'm working on that, and I've got a. Uh, I don't know how much you guys know about what I do. I mean, sometimes fans, they don't know very much about me. So we're reasonably, we're reasonably confident, reasonably knowledgeable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I've got a uh, a college that I'm in the process of uh, uh, tr uh, transacting. I'm going to be selling it. So. Wow. I've been involved in it for about six, about seven years now in the in in, in all, and uh, it's grown up quite a bit. I think it started with about when we when we acquired it, my group, uh, about just under four thousand students, and now it's just over twelve thousand students. So it's really expanded over those that period of time, and 
we've gone about as far as we can go with it. It's time to to move on because of the scale that it's reached. We need to put it in the hands of a bigger partner who can take full advantage of, of what it offers. But yeah. I've been very proud of that as well because it deals in natural medicine wow. and uh, training. Oh, nice. Yeah, training practitioners in, in the for the future in uh, all forms of nutritional medicine and uh, naturopathy, homeopathy, acupuncture, massage therapies, and so forth. All the things that, uh, that you know, natural, the, the way medicine was before petrochemicals mm. were used. Yeah, to, yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's another project I've been involved in that's been a big part of my life for the last seven years. That and, is fantastic. And again, that's an incredibly sort of, um, Philanthropist, um, or maybe that's not the right expression I'm looking for, but it's incredible. Well, I hope, sort of... I hope not, Dave. I'm planning to make some money off of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, at least he's honest. <laughs> oh, you evil businessman. Yeah, I'm an evil. See, that's the difference. <laughs> you can choose what kind of project there's the, you want. There's the about. ugly face of corporate. <laughs> it really is <laughs> ugly head. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> um, Shall we, um, shall we continue, guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you feel satisfied with the answer, Guy? Or is there anything you'd like to add? On projects I've, I'm working on? Uh, hmm. I'm happy with that. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm working on a game that has... Uh, well, no. Never mind. I won't, I won't tip my hand on the game, so you can just wait for this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, okay, so the next question... I guess gets more back into Silent Hill 2 territory, you know, sure. you, I guess it was inevitable, you know, we have to start talking about it eventually, but... Oh, no, uh, no, please, that's what um, it should be about, that's what fans want know, to hear about. Bearing in mind that you had very little knowledge about the actual, you know, story and the ending of Silent Hill 2 and all that, um, what kind of motivation did you receive from Team Silent to prepare you for each scene, uh, or as the general role, you know, for James Sunderland? Hmm. That's a deep one. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's deep because it was 15 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I've, I've, I really want to be fresh about this, so I want to recall a memory of it, not just repeat what I've said before to other people. Mm -hmm. I have said in the past that they did not give me much uh, detail or. Um, they didn't elaborate on what the different endings would be. They certainly never disclosed anything about the UFO ending or the the um, even the dog ending, which I recorded the lines for. They didn't describe it. The only endings that I was vaguely aware of were, you know, and I, even that I didn't. No, I didn't have any idea about the endings. Even even after we recorded it, for me, they could have recorded the scenes and put them in a different order. For all I knew, that how it was going to come out. So, about my motivation to take each particular scene, um, it was minimal. I think it goes back to the audition, where they decided that I was like James and so mm. they just wanted me to keep doing more of that which was be that kind of human uh, they wanted maybe a normal guy it sort was of very yeah they exactly hell. they didn't want me yeah. to overplay it at all they wanted they wanted me to but, well I mean you've, you you see the performance and they, that's what they that's how they liked it so when when I did it that way I, I think I when I listened to it it seems uh, I thought I was putting more out than people, than, than even I see in it. So I imagine other people see it as even more uh, cool or, um, what's the right word I'm looking for? It's like hidden. There's, there's not a lot showing there when I, when I listen to it. So I think it might even appear more so to others. I'm, when I look in the mirror at myself or when someone takes a picture of me, um, I'm always surprised because I thought I was smiling when I did that or I and when I see the photo I I look at my face and I don't see a smile on there it looks like I'm just neutral so yeah. I think when I'm not smiling yeah. my face is kind of taciturn 
and when I'm smiling, it's neutral. And if I really do a big smile, then it looks like a, a then fair, maybe it looks like a smile, <laughs> a normal smile to other people. And I then I saw the other day somebody posted, uh, you know, I have bitch face. I was it's a genetic problem that when I'm not. <laughs> Smiling really big, my face looks really bitchy. And I thought, yeah, yeah, I got that. Yeah. So somebody posted that, and I said, "You're cursed for bitch face, or you know, bastard face." In my case, I've got this. So I think they liked that for the part, and I, I had figured out he was living in a a nightmare, certainly a hellish world that he. You know, when you go through and you watch the game and all the stuff he sees, he never really gets bent out of shape about it, does he? I mean, he never really starts freaking out or no. losing it or, or getting extremely emotional. He just rolls from one thing to the other. The one, yeah. one uh, and I've said this before, but the one bit of advice that stood out in my mind, it may have been Ito. I'm a little confused now between Sato and Ito. I keep thinking it was Sato, but it may well have been Ito who, who said to me, um, you know, your character doesn't really show a lot of emotion. It's the other characters that define you. Said if you've ever seen a Clint Eastwood movie, it's kind of like he doesn't he doesn't act a lot. The, there's it's all these people around him are defining what he does. I don't know if that's a true analogy or not, but it stuck with me, so I uh, kept that in my mind. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I've always seen James as like probably the most um, human and realistic video game character I've ever seen. Um, well, uh, Dave, <laughs> that's because there are so many similarities. I mean, I didn't kill my ex-wife, but I, I, <laughs> she certainly tried to kill me, so I know what the feeling was like. Yeah, it was a hard one. So, yeah, I... I Just tap and, into and people I, don't laugh at serious. <laughs> Yeah. Don't laugh. It's serious. No, it's. I see. It's, it's good to laugh at it because otherwise I'd be crying no, about it, and it was very yeah. tough back then. But I had just been out of that marriage for only, uh, gosh, only a couple of years. Really, it was hard. It took took me took me almost five years to go from separated to divorced because it had to be done so uh, gradually and carefully. So wow. my, my ex-wife is a, was at that time quite famous in Japan, and she was, you know, difficult to say the least when she uh, went into a certain kind of frame of mind. And for me, it was took some finesse to have her leave me standing or leave my company standing. I think she on several occasions threatened to go on television and tell everybody that you know horrible things about me and that would have basically you know some actress in your country goes on television and starts ratting out her husband and saying terrible things about him you you might you might listen yeah. <laughs> to what she's yeah, saying yeah, yeah. Yeah. and that scared thing, me because yeah. yeah. i i mean think about rumors or yeah, yeah. Yeah. if you repeat that a lot people will stop believing it yeah, so that at that time, it, I had my children, my company, and my 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 wife, and uh, you know here I was, I was losing my wife, and I was having my my company threatened, and and I, and also having my children threatened because I, I might lose them through that process. So it was it was pretty low for me, and then I survived. Yeah, I survived it, but like I say, it took five years to get to the point where we had an amicable divorce because I just waited until she was ready to move on mentally and then she finally got to that point and it was it was easier to separate on that basis but it was those were hard years so when the game came along it's like you know man you know just what do you call it toughing it out a difficult emotional situation and yeah. bottling it all up inside you but having that pent up rage is was all very easy for me I'm not saying, you know, I don't know if they saw it or not. They just, they said, well, okay, react to the news that your your wife has died. And I just sat down and started crying in front of them and, and you know, doing, because that was all so close. It, it was, all that pain and sadness yeah, was so easy, close. Yeah. So just, there you go. <laughs> that's an amazing one. Wow, it's honestly, that is a very, um, it's a very touching story, you know, with how um, 
your life seems to have sort of coincided with what was what you would have to do for this role just not in the same way obviously but sort of on you know some maybe parallel ways and uh it must have yeah well there you go see i had that in me i don't usually i'm a basically a happy person a a, a happy-go-lucky and to be a happy-go-lucky person requires a great talent requires the talent to forget uh that uh, would be is not goal. that's not me uh, because i i will be the last man standing yeah so that's just me and i don't know if that I, i'm sure in some very deep level it connects to my words and how they sound to you when you talk to me and or when you listen to what i say is that i i will be the last person standing yeah. i won't so committing suicide would not have worked out i would have i would resolve some, my yeah, yeah. About debt in another way yep. and the other way i would resolve it in this case is easy it's the leave ending and that is me adopting laura not remarrying just taking care of her living a private life and mm-hmm. being extremely protective of her almost to the point of being troublesome right where she's growing up and it's time to step back and recognize that she's a young woman and she's got to socialize otherwise her life will not be happy and you know understanding that as well and you know not being a pain in the ass as she starts to date just making sure that her people who want to take her out on a date know that she's not alone and that they're at risk if they mess with her so that I'd be that kind of dad for her, and uh, someone wrote a scenario. They'd have an angry James with a chainsaw after them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they would. <laughs> someone wrote a scenario and suggested that uh, Laura gets a letter from Silent Hill, and it's from from Mary, and she takes off because she she knows if she so shows it to James, he he'll stop her from going but uh, she leaves and she leaves a letter for James as a possible sequel and I thought that sounded like a great setup for a sequel Uh and James gets to go back Mm, and play the hero in the second round instead of the the evil guy who's twisted and dark and sad in the first one yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> you know i liked that one dave <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's a classic um are you satisfied and happy with that and happy to move on? would you have turned yourself into the police though that's the question no no no, no. <laughs> before the police for what? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever looked at my page? <laughs> my profile page? <laughs> uh, well, a state. Um... What basically what you're asking me? Would I turn myself into the state? To the state? No, no, probably to not. The state. No, probably not. I'm an I'm an anarchist. Okay. I don't <laughs> the state. Okay. I'm an anti-statist. <laughs> no. Okay. It was bad enough. I, I have enough to deal with with myself if I'm James. That's a, you know. <laughs> One less Fair burden enough. you don't need. You know, to... Need to give yourself a break. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, shall we carry on then? Uh, we're almost. We're um, we're about to wrap this up. Actually, we just have one more thing to ask. Um. Uh, now, we know that in some past interviews there has been mention of a potential let's play where you sort of um take part and. Uh, watch and commentate over Silent Hill 2 gameplay. Maybe not through the entire game, but maybe certain key scenes, you know. Um, and now, if this was for, I don't know, a good cause or something, charity, um, would you maybe consider participating? You know, something like this? I would like to do that. It would be fun. I... But... I've watched a couple of Let's Plays and um in fact you know who likes let's plays is my 11 year old daughter she watches them all the time Mm -hmm. now and i'm Mm. it always surprises me but she 
she knows a lot about the latest games that are out because she watches the Let's Plays. We don't, we don't have the game system here, so <clears throat> we have a Wii. <laughs> so well, she can play she gets to play Memories. She gets to play Mario Kart. All <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. different league. Yeah. So Pyramid Head but, Edition. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Right. So she's got. She's. Um, <laughs> watching these let's plays and i'm and she said dad you gotta see this one and I'm watch it and my impression is the let's plays are pretty light hearted fair there's lots of banter and mm. chat and so forth and i'm not yeah. sure that it's supposed to be like a more fun thing you know like yeah yeah so i'd have to i don't know i'd have to work myself up for that i i'm not sure that I'm ready to do a let's play of Silent Hill 2. Uh, you know, maybe I could do a let's play of another game. But I, I, I would do it. Technically, uh, making those things, to, I, I like to do a good job. And I, I just, I, sitting down and just random, uh, not randomly, but just playing the game and talking as I go through. Ah, one, I got close to that with one of the things I did. I, I played the, uh, what do you call that? The the, the arcade game. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, oh yeah, I remember that. Oh. Remember? I remember that. Yeah, okay. That was funny. And then I made a video of that. And that I was... Yeah, yeah, that was... That was <laughs> that. Triangle Boy. I remember that. Boy. I died, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's. But I don't know if I could keep that up for what, you know, thirty <laughs> minutes or something. So, I think what I'd rather do is a. What do they call that? It's you. You get the deluxe version of the the video program, like the DVD, the direct. No, what do you call it? The special edition. Yeah. And and on one of the tracks, they have either one of the actors or the director is oh, yeah. giving commentary director yeah. commentary there you go so yeah. well, i wasn't the director but i would do the actor's commentary on uh maybe the cutscenes. so i think i might do that plus making the video and and ripping as you're playing the game and so forth i don't have the game console i i have some games but i don't have the console and i don't have the equipment to record it so that, that's a lot of work now if somebody out there listening today wants to put together a video for me to to do this to to record the audio for i'd be happy to do that but there's a lot of work that goes into editing together a decent program and i don't want it to run more than say 10 minutes at the most so it would have to be a selection of scenes and then then i'd get dave to come in and we could we could talk through some fun stuff that, then it would be it'd be a more entertaining. Maybe we get Monica to do it long wow, distance. Wow, that'd be amazing. Yeah, that would be amazing. Yes, it would be. It would be very interesting to hear. So there you go. A little long-winded answer. I would do it, but I'm not interested in doing a, a traditional let's play. I would be more interested in doing like a. Complex. If someone provided the gameplay and provided everything else, you know, you just stand for the audio. That would be something you would. Well, let because... me ask you guys some questions. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. You no, know, you, you've come to me and you. You've asked me to talk about my experiences, but you know more about it as players than I do. Mm -hmm. So, what uh, part of the game brings you to tears or brought you to tears in the first time when you played it? What was it? Oh, God. Um, I think, I think if I can start, if you guys sure. don't mind. Um, mm -hmm. The for me, for me, it was just even thinking about it now it almost brought me to tears. Um, thinking about <laughs> when he says goodbye to um, Mary, you know, or however the ending is, and uh, just that final letter that just absolutely, <laughs> yeah, that just brought me to tears. It was is a very powerful emotional moment for me. Mary's, um, Mary's letter, yeah. Yeah, Mary's letter, and just that final scene, you know, where he's sitting next to her and she's laying down. Um, I was also very shocked um, the first time I figured out what had actually happened. You know, some things dawned on me while I was playing, but um, never anything like that. So it was just fantastic. The, the whole game was just one of those things that I will never, ever forget. And I want to personally thank you, Guy, for um, making that happen by playing James. Mm, thank you. What about you guys? Roger. Dave. Dave. You ah, you're deferring <laughs> to me as usual. <laughs> um, I Stop being so humble. <laughs> um, I would, um, I would actually say that 
it's the it's the the long hallway scene just before um just just just, just before the end um where um James is obviously playing over something in his head from Mary where she's saying, you know, uh, you know, I bought you some flowers and she's saying, I don't want any flowers. Um, I found that to be very moving. Um, yeah, I agree. There was something, I deliberately, I deliberately took my time walking up that hallway so I could hear the entire conversation. Um, it always gets to me every time. It's just amazing, I think. You can just see the duality of their relationship, you know. And also, I just... She was scared on one hand. And she also, was I, just, and... I just think the voice acting there between, you know, the two is absolutely phenomenal. Mm. Mm. Roger. Um, We've stolen his thunder first, now. <laughs> when I first played the game, um, I had a friend of mine, a really good friend of mine, that um, committed suicide like um, two months ago and um, and I kind of was still in shock because I couldn't cry and I was just okay dad went to his funeral so I got that inside me and um, when I play the game and we get to the part of the letter and Mary's reading the letter and uh, she sounds tired not angry like just sad and tired and just i had enough of this so i just had to i went out for a cigarette and i just start crying like couldn't stop because it was bringing up all the thing that happened with my friend so that still gets me every time because it takes me back to when that happened. So, wow. That's it. Yeah. I've heard from some other people that there were events in their life that it allowed them to release bottled up feelings through. And uh, it was that way for me too, as you guys now know. Mm. Yep. So it was, yeah, it was pretty intense. It'll be. Oh, so let's see. Uh, though all of those. Uh, well, I I mean. All those experiences. Are are part of my experience too. Losing someone, to suicide and. Way before their time and. Yeah. Then, uh, that scene with in the long hallway which for me is the most important, most revealing scene for me in the, in, in the, the production. And then, uh, of course, the bedside scenes with Mary are mm. maybe the most, uh, most difficult emotionally. So, you, yeah, you've hit, hit three very <laughs> significant parts. Well... Mm. Let's see, do I have another question about it then? Uh, <laughs> that was pretty heavy. <laughs> Let's go, go yeah. for something lighter. Which was which were the uh, the most entertaining or, or light or, or uh, oh, that is easy. interesting part of the game? I mean, in, in, from an entertainment, per, for, from a humorous perspective. Better do something about that cough, Christina. Don't worry. I'm not crazy. At least, I don't think so. Hello. Welcome to Last Frame. I am Christina Marquez. And today we have a very special guest with us. I do believe he would like to introduce himself. Hello. I'm Guy Sehe. I play James Sunderland in Silent Hill 2. Yes, welcome, Guy. And with us are also my two amazing co-hosts. Hello, uh, this is Dave Hillborn, and I'm uh, also two back from Hell Descent Forums. And this is Roger. And I used to be in a Hell Descent Forum, but then I quit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, 
as most of you know, um, Silent Hill recently, well, the Silent Hill franchise recently turned 15 years. I do believe it was end of January, February, something like that. Yeah, close to February. Um, and we thought, you know, what better way to commemorate the series than to um, highlight arguably one of the most um, significant and pivotal games in the series, which is Silent Hill 2. And so we figured this would be a fantastic opportunity to interview Mr. Sihi, which is the voice behind James Sunderland, you know. Um, and we have some questions for you guys, both from ourselves and the community. So if you would be ready, we can get started right away with the first question. Sure, go right ahead. Okay, so first we want to know a little bit more about the guy, <laughs> pun not intended, behind James Sunderland. Um, now, in the past, we know you've mentioned doing various types of theater, and we were just curious, uh, what do you think may have inspired you to pursue acting? Well, hmm. When I was young, my, <clears throat> my mother played guitar, and my father played piano, and my mother taught my brother and I to sing, and that was where our performing talents began. I, my brother sings uh, to this day in a band. And oh. I um, sang in choir at uh, school and also at church. And then I performed in musical productions at my elementary school and high school. Um, then in the uh, 70s and 80s, when I was uh, still quite young, my my father was making some documentary films and uh, also some docudrama type films that were uh, distributed through schools around the United States, and and I uh, I starred in two of my dad's films, and then I also worked as a cameraman for some of his films. Wow. So then after, uh, yeah, it was, it, it was really quite a lot of experiences. I learned about editing back in those days when we would he'd be working on the, uh, completing his documentaries. And then uh, it, it, was, it was really quite interesting. My brother, my older brother went into film production uh, and I was supposed to, uh, in fact, I was enrolled at film school after high school, but uh, my uh, mother suddenly got this huge inspiration that I should change my in my major to industrial design. And uh, I really wasn't interested in many things at that time in my life when I was 17. Um, you know, motorcycles, sex and drugs and rock and roll. That's about all I could get my <laughs> head around, right? So I was like, okay, mom, whatever. And so she wrote to the co yeah she wrote to the college and changed my major. And I sometimes wonder how my life would have turned out had I gone to film school. Anyway, thanks. Thankfully, I uh, I really took to industrial design. I liked it. And in my <clears throat> in my third year of the design program, I was required to take these communications classes. And anybody who's gone to college knows about these classes. They're dreadfully boring and really quite, quite inane. And I asked the dean uh, of my program, what was the purpose of this communications class requirement? And the dean said, well, being a successful designer requires the ability to communicate in front of groups. And so we, we require the communications class. And I said, well, Dean, if, if you want to help the students prepare to speak in front of a group, they really should take acting classes. And he said, well, I'll tell you what, see, he, you take the acting class as a no credit elective. And if you still think it's a good idea afterwards, I'll consider it for future years. So I'm like, oh, well, well, I took the took him up on it. I did it anyway. And I took the acting classes and wow, they were fantastic. Wow. I, I, you know, I had been acting without mm -hmm. ever training or learning about it. It's like I had been drawing for years before I went to school and started learning how to render and do the, the sketching and the three-dimensional work that's necessary to be a designer. And then suddenly I'm able to act with someone coaching me 
and uh, giving me advice and teaching about the different approaches to acting and creating backstories. And it was fascinating. I loved it. And, uh, you know, how to stand, where to look when you're speaking to an audience, how to move your body when you're speaking in front of people. These are things I remember to this day and make me uh, a much better public speaker. So I remember nothing from the communications classes I was required to take. So I think my, my real interest in acting started with those classes. Um, I mean, I did it before that, but I didn't understand it as a, as a skill you can develop in that way by making an effort and consciously thinking through things. I mean, there, there are some people who are so naturally talented, I guess they don't, they don't really need to worry about that. They're just being on the, on the stage and just being it. And now, well, I mean, I've, I've gone on quite a bit about that. I will tell you one last thing though. My son has just gone out in the world and he's an actor and singer mm. as well. Yeah, seems to be in the family. Sort of got... runs in the family with you guys. Yeah. Acting, singing, yeah. Should he be performing with Romeo and Juliet at the moment, Guy? He did. Yeah. Well, he just wrapped that, but uh -huh. he's he's now he's auditioning for pilots uh, for uh, for TV shows in New oh, York. Wow. And he, uh, yeah. yeah, but he played with uh, Elizabeth Olsen. He played Romeo and she played Juliet at yeah. the Classic Stage Company in Manhattan. Yeah. And it was great. I went to see the show and, you know, I've he went and did a master's degree in acting at NYU Tisch, which is one of arguably one of the best acting schools in the world. And three years there, and I and I asked him about the experience because I only took two semesters of acting, and he he's done three years, right? So I was, well, mm -hmm. what have you? What do they teach you? What are you learning at that level? At, at that elevated level, right? I mean, and. Uh, he said, basically, you're learning not to act. Yeah. You're learning just to mm. be. You've yeah. got to, exactly. right? You've got to be the part, not act it. Yeah. And you, mm. to do that, you've got to get way past the lines and way past the thinking about the character. You just got to be. So really, you're learning how to be yourself in that part on the stage or in front of the camera. So that was really interesting to learn that from him. And I'm, I'm still learning about acting i learned mm. even today i what i posted a, a link to some video that a fan made uh by re-editing some material i had done several years back yeah and people are commenting on it and i'm learning from their comments even now about what how how that worked out and it's interesting yes yeah, so I, I i really like it I, I mean i wish i could do more of it it would be fun <laughs> was that the um mm. was that was that the thing that i posted on yesterday guy that i said had a very po vibe that's right to it. yeah that's right yeah which it I does mean, I recorded have. i recorded that <clears throat> like three years ago i think yeah i remember uh, it when you first put it up and i it when i a, a fan sent it to me and it was uh it was kind of hauntingly interesting and his first language is not english so it has a very romanticized version of English uh, yeah, in the yeah. translation, right? And um, and I recorded it and I put some, and I and I thought, well, I think that was actually the first thing I ever recorded uh, since the, uh, fans started contacting me. And it was the first dramatic reading I'd done in, in years. So it's... I just, I wanted to put some images to it. So I was just, oh, okay, you know, I'll, I'll go fart around with, uh, movie maker and i edited that video and threw it up there and it's kind of sat there all this time now he this the the uh, i think his name is uh curtis ryan he he found it and he re-edited it to silent hill 2 images and i don't know if you've seen it yet but it it really struck me very deeply with how Oh my goodness, this thing was written for Silent Hill too. Oh, what a dummy I am, right? I mean, of course, a fan sends me this thing. <laughs> and I, I suppose he thought I would get it, but I didn't get it at first. And now I asked uh, Curtis if if he knew that from the first time he heard it. Did he figure that out the first time? And he said, no, it was only when I started editing it that I saw how the images were just going together with it. And I... Wow. So I don't know. Maybe it was. I'm trying to figure that out. I'm trying That's to track a bit of down. That's helpful like, serendipity, though, isn't it? Um, yeah, really. Um, I'm trying to. Someone else said it that he thought the words might fit well with another another game. That's very so helpful. I, 
it may be the universal key, right? This 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 story about being trapped in hell. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Um, how about we move on a little bit? Uh, now, this next question sort of ties into what you've been talking about now, you know, because it addresses um, certain past projects and things you've done in the past. But maybe, you know, let's... Roger, do you want to go ahead and ask the question yeah. anyway? Yeah, well, um, we heard that you worked on fun projects before. And um, but what other significant projects have you worked on? Are you working on anything at present? Well, I am, but I have a game soft. I like to think of it as a game software business now. It started out as an education software company, but I see that the future is in, let's, they're called serious games. This is a way of com commuting knowledge in a very painless and fast way. So I have mm -hmm. certain expertise i even my company has some patents on the process of refining knowledge so that it can be quickly assimilated uh the states back you know i've got a long history in this education area and i have been keenly aware of mankind losing out in the race to manipulate knowledge and i don't like that so I know where humans have special talents that cannot be, at least at this point in time, cannot be duplicated or bested by machines. And I, uh, I like working in that area. I like keeping... You ever see that movie Terminator? Yep. I'm kind mm. of, I'm the anti-terminator. Yeah. I'm one of the people fighting against the machines. I'm a, uh, I wouldn't call myself a neo-Luddite, but I, I prefer that to. That may you John Connor. <laughs> uh, no, I won't claim that. I'm, I would say I'm, but I'd be one of the people on his team. Hurrah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm on serious 